Now, I would love to introduce our next speaker who is sharing knowledge on racial gaslighting at work, what to do if it happens to you. So we have our very own Noelle Johnson and a dear friend of mine uh, who is a global DEI strategist and trainer with over a decade of experience working in operations across industries and has been recognized for her expertise on mentorship and sponsorship. Noelle has been featured in Forbes, Fast Company, NPR, and more. Thank you so much for joining us today, Noelle. And before I jump into um, the questions that folks have submitted previous to this conversation, as well as my questions, can you just let us know a little bit about yourself for those who have not heard you speak yet on Power to Fly? Um, of course, I've had the honor of speaking with you multiple times. Um, so just let us know a little bit more about yourself. Absolutely. Hi, everybody. So my background is working in operations, um, mostly focused on company culture. Uh, I started a company that was focused on helping people get into positions that they were really passionate about because only 70% of people love where they work. Uh, then I moved into the DEI space permanently when I realized that it wasn't just getting people into great companies. I wanted to make companies the kind of great places that people wanted to work. So I'm so excited to continue this conversation, especially with this amazing host. I love speaking with you um, and happy to dive right in. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's just set the stage. Um, you know, let's start with the basics so that we can set the stage for the conversation. For those who are not aware of the definition, you know, let's just crack that wide open. How do you define racial gaslighting? And maybe if you can give an example of how one could identify that in their day to day, just because I know that we might have some people who probably do experience it, but they don't know how to name it and then deal with it. So how do you define this? So gaslighting at work is very much the way that it sounds. This is when you were meant to feel like you are the problem, that you are um, crazy, that there's something wrong with you when the issue is very obviously the organization as a whole. So with racial gaslighting, what we'll see is something uh, is obviously racist is going on. You might bring it up to somebody's attention and they're telling you like, oh, I think that you took that the wrong way. Or maybe you're... Uh, not really thinking through what's really going on. Maybe you need to listen to the other side. So a lot of the time these can show up as microaggressions, but you're made to feel as if you are the issue or that you're not hearing things right when you know that it is a problem. So there may be some internal struggles with a, am I blowing this out of proportion or is this actually an issue? I love that. And actually, I'm going to look for the link where we kind of we dove deeper for a full hour at, at our chat and learn here with Power to Fly so that folks can easily access that and, and take their time to walk through that. But I want to bring up a question that um, that folks submitted for, for just to understand the difference between imposter syndrome and gaslighting, if you do see that there is a difference. So uh, how, do, how can you clarify the difference between the two just to take your previous response a little deeper? Yeah, so imposter syndrome is when you think that you don't have all the right credentials, that you aren't ready for the role or you aren't able to um, take on responsibilities. Sometimes imposter syndrome makes sense because of um, the situation that you're in. You may not be as experienced as you want to be. And sometimes it is just um, a lack of confidence in an area. With gaslighting, this is something that is intentionally being um you're being made to feel as if you're the issue when you're not an issue. So in, imposter syndrome is more internal um, and gaslighting is something that is happening to you. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for setting up the stage just because I know, you know, as we travel the world, I know that you're a globetrotter as well. We seem to, you know, be throwing all these, you know, new vocabulary and lingo. We have all of these, you know, um, just the, the shorter version of saying this really, really big, chewy concepts. I just wanted to just set the stage for everyone so that we can be on square one together. So thank you for that uh, knowledge, Noel. All right, let's move into this next question here. How do you decide when it's worth investing in a conversation with your boss or HR about your experience versus when it's time to leave the country? Uh, sorry. <laughs> that uh that was a slip blip i i just have to also say too i'm doing a lot of healing um lafon just dropped a lot of knowledge on like i am my ancestors wildest dreams i currently don't live in the states we can go into all that that i'm you know 
going through as far as my personal healing from trauma and ancestral, you know, healing and all that. Um, so maybe that was a blip that needed to come out in case folks are thinking of like leaving and moving uh, around the world just to discover themselves a bit more. So I will reread this <laughs> without my blip there. How do you decide when it's worth investing in a conversation with your boss or HR about your experience versus when it's time to leave the company? You know, I got to say, I love that that slip because I think that when this happens from organization, from organization, from organization to you, you might be planning your black sit, right? Like you may be deciding like maybe it's the country. <laughs> so I completely understand that. Um, so I think that it, it really depends on the degree on what's going on. I think it's always worth having a conversation with your manager right away. If there is something that's a blatantly like violently racist, uh, leaving the company right away is the way to go. But normally when it's a gaslighting, situation these are little it's a microaggressions normally or just um the overall culture of the organization that just feels a little bit off and so addressing that over with your manager uh coming up with if you have any solutions and being able to present that like this is the way that this should be this would be a lot better um and making sure that those things get heard but beyond just being heard that there's actual actions that are being taken. So I like to see that there are there's some momentum and what I've brought to the table and that some some change is starting to happen. And if there isn't, that's when it's a good time to leave. But I want to make sure that I have first gave them an opportunity to fix things. Sometimes people are completely oblivious because they don't belong to the same demographic that you're in. So give them a chance to change. And if they don't, you got to move on. Yes. And as some of our previous guest speakers were, were just highlighting it is not your job to try to prove to anyone that you are capable that you deserve equity that you know you know you're especially if you, if you I love that they said if you can't send it as an invoice that you are strategically here to educate then it is not your job and if people are not welcoming you in that space it is time to leave and of course the big question is you know of course people have to keep their lights on they need to feed themselves maybe they don't have that option to leave so I just love for those who feel like you know they feel psychologically unsafe you know, maybe even physically unsafe, what is something that people can do to start that, um, you know, that journey if they can't leave today, for example? Absolutely. If there is a, and, and for this group, especially if there's a black ERG group, make sure that you get tapped into that. If you have any mentors in the organization, make sure that you're speaking to them about what you're experiencing. And then outside of work, you're going to make sure that you have as much self-care as possible if you're in a situation where you can't leave and there's been no progress. So you need to make sure that you're taking care of your own mental health as much as possible because this can be very draining. Um, work trauma is a real thing. And it's something that we can carry with us when we are ready to move to that next position. And we're super suspect about even a great organization because of some past experiences that we had. So make sure that you take some time to take care of yourself and anyone that you've known who's gone through a, a similar situation speak over with them talk to them about how they got through it and then you can you know get ready for those next steps when you're able to and this is also i'm just going to highlight i know i've been sounding like a broken record but please feel free to use the chat box to build meaningful connections because clearly you know we're all here at the summit because we are interested in amplifying black voices um, and if you are having, you know, doubts or you're struggling, um, you know, I really encourage you all to reach out to a couple people who are sharing their LinkedIn's or sharing their preferred ways of connecting so that you can just know that you're not alone and you have that extra, you know, I, Noel, we've done a whole chat also on, you know, the, the importance of networking. Um, and I feel like in this specific example, you know, that can also help with the transition. So if you're building meaningful connections and networking, you know, you can get that support, you can get that, you know, positive, just reinforcement um, and, and just have that other mirror looking at you versus, you know, a, a company or a team that is not really seeing you for who you are. 100%. And let's breathe because that's a lot to take in, right? It's Ooh, real. But make those connections, it really makes a difference, especially when you're going through a situation like this, you're trying to get out, get those connections going. So let's move into this next question here. If you do decide to take your experience to HR and or leadership, how can you prepare for the conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're going to want to go at a time that you feel the most comfortable and that you can be in a situation where you feel the most safe. Sometimes it's even the HR manager that can be the issue. Um, so if you need to bring somebody else in, definitely make sure that you do that. Um, you're going to want to keep to as many facts as possible. Um, obviously, a lot of the time, this is something that can be very 
personal, but you want to just make sure that you have everything written out just in case it becomes a very emotional conversation, because then that person may tend to your emotions and not tend to what the troubles are. So make sure that you have those things together, have it in writing as well, what you talked about and what some of those next steps will be. I love that. And so, you know, is it, is it ever too late to start to gather that information? You know, I, I know that a lot of people are like, well, this happened two years ago. And I, you know, I, how do I remember that exact example? I mean, when should someone start to take notes if they feel even that, you know, there's even a drop of, of, of a chance that this is happening? take notes as soon as something happens, especially if you feel like this is just a little thing I'm not really sure, go ahead and write it down. It's not hurting anything to have it. And then when more things start to happen, you'll have a better case when you um, present it. Um, but really, I like to be able to address things head on, but not everybody feels comfortable to do that right away. So if you feel more confident coming to HR, coming through to your supervisor with more examples, definitely do that. Um, but if you do feel a little bit more comfortable, I would definitely urge you to do that as soon as it starts happening. That way we can stop. I mean, microaggressions can be a death of a thousand cuts. So we want to stop at cut one if we can. Ooh, I need to put that on a t-shirt. That is so real. <laughs> that's like the, that's a really great way of putting like what microaggressions are. I've heard like this, um, the mosquito bite uh, analysis as well that, you know, it's like, it's like nobody likes to be bitten by mosquitoes and especially when there are a million mosquitoes happening all at once. But I love this, uh, also this analogy that you brought up. Um, okay, so we have some live comments and questions coming in here from Dr. India Caldwell. Microaggression is real, but what if it comes from your leaders, not your subordinates? It's hard when the people you are supposed to go to are the oppressors. Ooh. Absolutely. Um, if you have a kind of relationship where you can talk to them directly about it, that's what a leader is supposed to be able to do. This. A good leader is supposed to be able to take feedback, even if that feedback makes them uncomfortable. It really needs to be um, both ways when it comes to growth in your organization, when it comes to leaders. So being able to tell them directly, that's problematic, this is why. It's important that you're able to do that. But sometimes we have a manager that is so problematic that we can't have that kind of conversation. That's when we want to uh, take it over to HR. If you're in an organization that doesn't have HR in place, um, if there's somebody above that person's head, you need to go above them. I know that makes things really uncomfortable, but you have to protect yourself. And if you feel like you can't have that conversation with your supervisor, that is a massive red flag that needs to get addressed right away. Thank you so much. Yeah, look out for the red flags and don't feel self-conscious about it. No, you know, it's it's an external happening um, and there's no need to, you know, to, to beat yourself up about that. So I just want to empower folks to, you know, to, to have that agency. Um, all right, another live comment here, question. How do you handle when you try to address something with someone who has harmed you and they instantly start to cry? I feel like the conversation can be productive if they are performing. <laughs> I love this question. Thank you so much for asking. This is very frustrating because at this moment, this person has centered everything around themselves and they're putting you in a position where you're supposed to make them feel better or feel uncomfortable. And we're not going to do that today. So what we're going to say instead is I see that you're very emotional. I do want to continue this conversation. When you're feeling more calm, I would like to continue the conversation. Maybe we can bring a mediator in place if you feel like you need one. Um, but what we're not going to do is to attend to somebody's needs who's crying when they're the ones that have been offensive. It's not fair and we shouldn't have to deal with that. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. Thank you so much for the comment. And actually, you know, this is this is why it is a collective work. It cannot just be Black folks working on their own healing and trauma and standing up and knowing their self-worth. No, it needs to come from all sides because then when I want to come to you and you and you have this emotional response, it's okay to release and have that emotional response, but it shouldn't feel like it's blocking our, you know, movement to progress and try to, you know, have some authentic dialogue to then resolve some of the, the, the rooted issues there. So, um, you know, this is a call out to everyone. We all have work to do. We all have that self-work piece to do that, that LaFon was mentioning in the previous talk. Um, this is not, you know, just for black folks. Of course, we as black folks have a lot of work to do. And I think that we are doing that. I think the fact that we're showing up here, we're having these, you know, authentic uh, dialogues, these, these transparent conversations, 
you know, I think back to one of my idols, James Baldwin. I don't, I, and I don't, this wasn't, you know, this was not allowed to happen during his time. So the fact that we are here amplifying Black voices, you know, we are already making a lot of moves. So let's just continue to support each other doing that. So thank you so much, Noel. I appreciate you. Absolutely. All right. Let's move on to this next question. Time is flying, and I just want to pick your brain as much as possible oh, no. before we have to pass the mic. <laughs> okay. So what should you do if you legitimately aren't sure whether an issue, for example, making less money than a colleague stems from racial bias or something else. Yeah, um, I think that it, what it's harder with salary, um, especially if you're in the US because it's something that we don't tend to share with one another unless you're in the government space. Um, but being able to get as many examples to show that this is true is definitely helpful. Speaking to people, if you're in a Black ERG group to have these conversations is helpful. Um, if you don't have a Black ERG group to just spend time with any other um, Black and Brown people in the organization, um, you don't have to see the issue outright, but we definitely have ways to navigate these conversations a little bit to kind of Hey, have you noticed anything that's, you know, a little bit different when it comes to such and such, um, if you don't feel like you have that kind of relationship with that other person. Um, but I think that having those conversations are, is helpful and any, um, any research that you're able to do is definitely good as well, um, just to see if there's a theme that's going on. Um, yeah, I think, I, I, I feel like I can go on and on, but I see another question coming through. So I just, yeah, if, if you have, want me to dive in any deeper there, I definitely can. Well, maybe you can tie it into some uh, some reflections for for this uh, comment here and some some questions that we have before we run out of time. So um, we have someone who is sharing their experience in the chat. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to read it out loud now. Didn't have anyone I could talk to. Felt isolated. HR and leadership, all buddies, white male. Uh, was a very emotional time for me. Ended up leaving the company, even though I didn't have anything else lined up. Any words of encouragement or just compassion or just tips and tricks for this person? Because I know that this person also is not alone. Absolutely. I went through the same experience. I was working at an organization where I was the only Black person in a position that wasn't at the call center. Everybody else in the organization was white. So whenever I would bring up a situation surrounding racism, I was told, oh, I really don't think that that's what's going on. And it got to a point where I had to exit that organization. It feels really isolating, especially if you're the only or you're the one of few and you need to go in every day and you're not believed. So if you make the decision to leave, know that you've done what is best for you, especially when things are not getting addressed the way that they should be. I think it's always worth having a conversation, but you know, it, it can be super challenging. I completely understand that. And I wish you really good luck in your next endeavor. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's move on to the next question here. And I see more comments coming up, but I'd like to get some, to some of these previously submitted questions as well. All right, so what are some ways to respond if a company uh, the company representative denies your experience of racial bias in the workplace. I would need to understand a really good reason of why it's being um, um, why it's being denied. I would need to see some proof of what they're saying is not racially based. Um, so if I can't see that, then I'm not going to be able to go along with it. I want to stick to what my story is, what I've experienced, and how I was made to feel. Um, so if it's an instance where um, maybe a situation was not intended to be a racial microaggression, I would give an example of how I was made to feel in that instance. And maybe there's a way that they can do that better, but it sounds like there's a way for us to be better at you know, inclusive communication if I'm still made to feel bad, even if the intention wasn't to be negative. Yeah, I mean, we are definitely asking for leadership to change it up, for employees to also change it up. Um, and it's a lot of work, but I think it's, you know, there it's, if anything, it will open up a space for us to, you know, redefine a lot of things, our purpose, what does success mean? How do I contribute to, you know, my community, the society, um, and just, you know, make, be the change I want to see essentially. So yeah, there's a lot of work to do. And I, I know we're like high level going through this, um, but I just also want to remind folks that, you know, what Noel said in the beginning, make sure that you have um, some self work, some self practice handy so that you can, you know, unplug whatever you're, you know, if it's journaling, if it's meditating, if it's running, walking, you know, uh, Noelle, I would love to also hear some tips that you have just to like make sure that you aren't going through this alone and that you can stay, you know, as balanced as possible during all the, the chaos. Do you have any tips for, you know, how someone can stay more, you know, balanced in this process? 
Yeah, I think that it's everything that you said. Um, tap into whatever are your hobbies, what makes you happy. I like to spend time with friends whenever I'm having a difficult time, even if I don't want to talk about work, just going out, going to get something to eat is always, you know, healing for me. Um, I'm a big fan of journaling and meditation. That's a big help. Um, and I just, I can't let it, everything in. I'm a big advocate for therapy. So if you have it, you know, in your um, budget or it's something that's offered through your work and they have an EAP, definitely utilize that because it can be really isolating. You might need somebody to support you through it. Absolutely. Okay. So let's move on to another comment here. Comment question from our live audience. I advocated for myself and then everyone was on their best behavior for eight weeks and then went right back to the same. That's how I knew it was time to go and put together an exit plan. What are other signs that it's time to leave? I think that when you address an issue and you're told that you're wrong or that you're being sensitive, that's a really huge red sign that a red flag that it is time to leave. Um, when I see people start to revert back to their old ways, okay, well, that really wasn't that important. Or if they're starting to revert and it's just in a different way, it may be something that they didn't realize, but if it is something that is just very clear, they're not listening to what I'm trying to say, uh, it's time to go. Um, if the organization has some serious issue when it comes to diversity and inclusion overall, it's definitely a red flag. These are red flags we want to take a look at when we're looking at the company website. So um, sometimes we can just kind of see it there the way that um, different groups tend to click together, where you're feeling isolated in the organization, all these things like keep note of it and see how it sits in yourself. And if it doesn't feel right, you know, you know, your gut knows what's up. I love that. And, and getting back to that intuitive knowledge and intelligence comes with, you know, a lot of emotional intelligence practice um, so that, you know, you listen to your body reacting and then you can feel supported in making moves and decisions, you know, to, to take care of yourself. Um, whew, lots of lots of information, lots of knowledge uh, here that you're sharing today, Noel. Thank you so much. Um, another question here from our live audience. How do you approach conversations with a leader or otherwise who perhaps use their own identity to shut down any conversation? Ooh, okay. Um, I would definitely explain to them, well, your experience is different than my experience and your identity is different than mine. And this is what my experience is. Um, this is again, centering. Um, and if you feel comfortable enough, um, let them know that is centering. And this, this may not be what your intention is, but right now you're centering in on yourself. I'm talking about my own experience. And if you are um, queer or a woman or you know a million different other identities, there are things that we are going to experience that is very different than being a black person in this space. So making that, calling it by name, I think is important. And it's not to discredit um, whatever experience that they have, but we're talking about two different things. And if you're having a challenge in a certain area, that's fine. But if you, um, what I'll hear sometimes in this case is, well, I'm, you know, I'm gay and I don't have that same experience that you're talking about. Okay but we're talking about two different things. So maybe that's an area that we're doing great in this company. We're not doing great in this area. And that's what I'm letting you know right now. Yes, I love that. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, let's practice more empathy so that that doesn't even need to come up, right? So it's like, we have a lot of work to do in several areas. You know, we are currently just trying to navigate these uncertain waters, but that, that leads to a lot of opportunity and for these conversations to happen. So um, you know, having that anchor in that we need to be more inclusive in all the ways. And so to try to put up your identity as, you know, it's just, we're playing the same game that, that was going on before inclusivity was highlighted. So I appreciate that reflection. All right. This is a really important so, question. Sorry, oh, yes, really, really quick. Sorry, yes. really, really quick to add on to that. A lot of the time when somebody is centering, it isn't always intentional. They're not always trying to take the situation away from you. Um, that's the way that a lot of us are taught to have conversations that are uncomfortable or have difficult conversations is to relate to that person somehow. We are reteaching ourselves how to have difficult conversations. So just letting them, did you, I don't know if you knew this, but you're centering right now. Um, this is where I really need to have this focus right now. It may not be to do more harm in that situation. They may just be trying to relate and are doing it wrong. Yes, yes. Okay, so we've got about two minutes left. I'm going to read this question um, that we tackled in our previous interview, but I think it's really important now as I know that folks are looking for new jobs and things like that. So my current job is very psychologically unsafe and generally just an unsupportive environment. 
Um, are there signs I should look out for during my job search or while interviewing to tell if another organization will have these same problems? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you want to take a look at their website. You want to take a look at the diversity and the leadership team. If there are none, you want to make sure that you're bringing that up on the interview. You want to ask the company, not just what they're doing about diversity, but what does inclusion look like at their organization and make sure that you feel really comfortable with what those answers are. And informational interviews are a amazing tool. So if you're able to have an informational interview with a person of color that works at that organization, take up that opportunity. Um, try to have more than one if you're able to, because just one person's experience isn't always enough. Um, so make sure that we're able to, you know, to connect to people if we're able to, but look at what's going on in the organization. Also take a look. I'm a big fan of just Googling things, see if there's any articles that come up, put in the company's name and problematic or racist or sexist or anything else that you want. See if any articles come up. It might've been a few years ago, they might've addressed it, but I wanna see that. Also take a look at what their DEI um, policy or statements and or anything else that they have about in their career or about us page, um, you know, what they say and make sure that those values are, you know, tied to where you feel most comfortable. Yes, and bring up some questions in those interviews, right? Use that time to really, you know, speak to what you want to know instead of trying to please someone because you're afraid of, I don't know, not getting hired. Okay, lots, lots and lots of information. I really appreciate you, Noelle. Uh, speaking of connecting with folks, how can people reach out to you if they want to continue the conversation? Absolutely. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm Noelle C. Johnson on LinkedIn. So I would love to stay connected with you and continue the conversation.